Florida State leads three to one. Last matchup though, back on September 15th, TCU won three to one, but these teams have changed so dramatically since, it's almost hard to put any stock in that. Yeah, and it gets kind of confusing. You, when they start telling you injury here, injury there, it, 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 we'll get into it a little bit, but yeah, it's gonna be a different matchup today. We're off and rolling, how about an ace to start our match? Yeah, that ball just kind of dropped off. She didn't have any spin on it, and uh, there's probably some nerves going with both teams right now, and both teams are just probably trying to figure out how to settle in. Roby serving. So she went from an ace to an air. That's how this one begins. Anything you're watching for early on, maybe the first set or first half of the first set? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out with Florida State. Uh, they have an efficient offense, and the reality is TCU has to figure out where to put their blockers. And if the right sides for TCU get going a little bit, that's going to make it uh, not right sides for Florida State, I should say. If they get going, it might make it tough for TCU to figure out where to put blockers. That was just slammed down by Sarah Sylvester. Going to introduce you to some of these stars as we go along. Melanie Parra, one of those for TCU. Certainly some great size and leaping ability for Florida State. Knowles can't play that one. Sir past jitters right now. You know, I just talked to Coach Jason Williams like right before the match. We were walking in together and he said, this is really going to come down to serve and pass. And that's, that's coach speak, but it's also true, uh, especially in a match of this magnitude. Serving was Knowles. And there's a big swing from FSU and Rothman. And she was one of those players that wasn't healthy and didn't play the first time these teams met. Yeah, and her efficiency in system, and that was a great pass. Uh, Florida State Center did a great job just being an athlete, getting to it and giving her an in-system ball. And her efficiency when it's in system, uh, it's going to be hard to stop for TCU. This is Jelly Droskovic out of Serbia. We're talking about her a lot today as the uh, setter, now serving for FSU. And there's the swing from Gibson. Powerful kill. Great swing. It's uh, feast or famine right now in serve receive. It seems like it's either a perfect pass or a shank right now. So see it settle in here a little bit. Serving for the Horn Frogs was Bromscheiber. Off the hands and down, and the kill goes to Rothman again. Just such size. She, she caught her feet there a little late, but the, the angles with the length of uh, that swing just makes it hard to set up the block. She's done that twice. Pretty good angle. Yeah, on swing. it's just hard. Once you get to a certain height, it just changes the game. Uh, and they have a lot of height on this Florida State team. Sent back with that size in the middle. Lewis, one of those, she can touch 10-10. She gets the swing there and gets a kill. A block and finishes. That's a pretty good eight-second sequence. Yeah, interesting about that is TCU tried to put three blockers up on a middle attack. It's going to make it interesting to see if they can get to the pins and block as well, but maybe that's just an early cat and mouse game. Rothman serving again. Did she get it in? She did. Another ace, second for FSU. Again, feast or famine. You just got to let some of these nerves wear off. It's a, it's a new season. Everyone is 0-0 zero and zero and trying to figure out how to make a run in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's an early 3 nothing run for Florida State. <laughs> Trying to get Para going. One of our first big swings. And there's an answer and a kill from Koenig. They call her AK. They're Aubrey heavy, but AK's done it a lot this year. Yeah, if you notice with her, I've noticed that she tends to hit down the line a little bit cleaner if it's in system. Uh, out of system, she doesn't tend to go that sharp down the line, so that was a nice swing to start off things. What a run for Rothman, and she'll provide the air to give TCU a bit of a break. Yeah, sometimes as an athlete, when you have time to think about things, so serve and receive, <laughs> it's when the jitters start to get in a little bit, so they'll settle in after a little bit. This is Gibson serving, and she's long on that swing. Adrenaline does some amazing things, but uh, sometimes it doesn't help you out. Philomoa serving now. Parra tried to get that kill, and it finally lands down, and TCU gets the point. She is one of the most fun outside hitters in the country to watch, I think. Yeah, look at just the athleticism 
and found a way to just kind of rip it off the top of the block. But we're going to be saying her name a lot today. Yeah, she really had to lean back just to make good contact. Texas transfer won a national championship with the Longhorns. Much bigger role here for TSH TCU. There's the block, but it's out. Koenig took a rip at that ball. That ball was probably uh, eight to 10 feet off the net, really out of system ball, and she went for it. So that, that, if I'm a coach of her team right now, I'm feeling like she's trusting her swings right now and finding ways to score. So that's a, that's a, good, that's a good sign for Florida State. Here's the local product serving. Kenna Phelan, well, she got a huge ovation when they announced the starting lineup. Family and friends here went to high school just about a mile away. That was going to be a TCU point. Touched at the net. Another nice out of system swing out of the back row. Uh, she does a good job back there. She tends to do a little bit better when it's in system on the big. It was what we call it when it's a faster ball. That was a little bit of a higher ball, and she still uh, had a great swing at it off the top of the block. Rihanna Green serving for TCU. Well, that was tight. Played over, though, by FSU. What a swing. Put down by Knowles. Knowles loves an insistent ball. If you look at how fast they set that ball to her, it went quick, and she has the ability to hit it hard angle to the left of left back. Uh, and that's an impressive sweep give, given how fast the ball is coming to her right hand when she has to hit it. Second team all Big 12 performer. This is Green serving again. I think they're calling the setter under the net. But I can't tell 100%. Yeah, seven. Yep. Coach pulled up for a quick explanation. Gives TCU a one-point lead at 9-8. Played up by TCU, poked over by Nicholson. TCU pretty good at the blocks, but that's another one that went off their hands and out for an FSU point. Yeah, if I'm Coach Poole, I'm happy right now. The, the girls are trusting their swings. Her body wasn't there. It wasn't a great situation, but she had some courage to go swing at it. Koenig serving. Going quick to the middle. Roby couldn't terminate. Up and over by Knowles. One of the longer rallies we've had so far here in set one. Set back by FSU. Kenna Phelan, the hometown girl, gets the tip of a roll shot up, up under the block. She laid out for it, and then her team helped her out with the block later. Koenig serving again. Not handled at all by TCU. Started to rack up a few of the aces. A lot of shake up hot right now. It's, uh, it's, uh, the jitters are there. I stole that from a pickleball announcer, sorry, but. You're telling me those are real? <laughs> the nerves, the anxiety of an NCAA tournament? Three aces already for FSU, which has been a big part of their two-point advantage. That really, I don't even know if that was a block. That was probably in the top of the net, but that's a lot of size right there at the net tape for the Seminoles. Yeah, th th those are the similar swings I was talking about that Florida State had, and they looked confident in it. They got solid contact. They were hitting the top of the block, but TCU looked a little jittery in them, like they were second. Say, well, not seeing a lot of the Big 12, Ryan, they're extremely deserving with the seasons they put forward. Yeah, it's nice to see that this coaching staff and players are getting recognition for it early on in a, in a, a rebuild, as they would consider it with TCU Horn Frogs. What powerful swing from Rothman and a kill, and now a four-point lead for FSU. I mean, Rothman had a great swing, but really got to give credit to the setter, Fila, and she uh, had to be an athlete, got her feet to the ball, kept it out of the net, gave her a great ball to swing at. Well, she's going to be excited to be here, and that was put down quickly from the middle by Sylvester. I think FSU wondered if maybe she kind of grabbed that a little bit and threw it down. Yeah, it was a little close to a baseball throw, but it, it was on the border. I can see not calling it, but if our floor stayed, I'd been a little frustrated too. Off the block, and it's going to be point FSU. Another great set by Phelan. It, it looked like she's going to go outside. She just used her shoulder strength and threw that ball back. Now that's two balls on the right side that have had some nice swings. That was one of the things I was looking at earlier. If the right side gets going for Florida State, it's going to be hard for TCU to find a way to stop them. 
Groby serving, and that was Long providing a free point for TCU. It felt like they kind of needed that one at this point. Yeah, they did. And the reason I'm saying that they, they if the right side for Florida State gets going, the, the middle blockers for TCU, they, they're going to have to push to the right when the other middles go. And so basically your blockers are one-on-one -on -one at some point. So uh, they have three attackers that can all swing. So you need to put in a situation where uh, you can try to get two blockers on an attacker at, at a given point, and that's hard. It would seem like with both of these teams' size, that's going to be important, right? Those those blocking opportunities and not going one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly. And Florida State makes that tough with always having three attackers. How about the finesse there from Rothman? We've seen the big swings. That time she went up and over and down for the 15th point. It's almost like a waterfall. She just barely puts her hand up, and she's roll shot. Most people have to roll shot up. She's roll shotting down almost. Uh, Alex Kleiman a long time ago at Stanford, player of the year, she used to do that, and it was unbelievably hard to stop because the angle, it's just going down. It's not going up. Give yeah. your defenders time. Hard to recognize. Yeah. Next serving for the Horn Frogs is Bram Schreiber, Lovejoy High School there in Dallas. Well, that was fast, and that's Corey Lewis. Remember, she has the leaping ability. She can reach or touch 10-10. So that one's in her hitting zone, to say the least. From our perspective, we'll see. There's two blockers up. There was, they're not in a bad spot, but when you can touch 10-10, it just opens the court up in amazing ways. TCU has been running uphill just a little bit, played back by Gibson. There's Parr. She's been a little bit quiet to this point. And the left-handed swing from Snyder, and that's going to be a point for the Seminoles as they extend their lead to their largest of four. And that started with the freshman libero, Philomoa for Florida State. She made a great move and had a nice touch to absorb the ball a little bit, and they got a nice transition swing. Talk more about Philomoa. She's been interesting, right? She was a hitter, then she had to become more of a defensive player, and then she moved back to a hitter. <laughs> she just continues on this wild journey, and there's an answer briefly from TCU. Yeah, for, for a freshman to step into this role for this team to go be ACC co-champs, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, pressure on her shoulders, and she's handled it well. Gibson serving. Koenig doesn't get the kill. Chance for TCU. Any fingers? There was not. And the Seminoles get the 18th point. I know she missed that swing, but I at least like that she went and ripped at it. Uh, if TCU is going to have struggles right now, they're known for being an offensive, aggressive offensive team. And so if they're shaky with those things, that's not their identity. How about the block? There were three Seminoles and six hands or arms at that net. I wonder if they figured out in the scouting report, they do not go back uh, to Gibson when she has an air. So they didn't have to worry about that back row attack anymore and then they were sitting on the back row attack out of the middle, so that was, a, that was a nice place to be. That's interesting, not going back after an error. Yeah, they haven't done that in about five games, so we'll, we'll see if they uh, trust it a little bit more as the match oh, unfolds. Oh, you coaches are sneaky. You're yeah. scouting reports and <laughs> all the time watching those games on tape, trying to come up with something. This, this serve right here is one of the most special serves in NCAA volleyball. We're talking 50 to 55 miles an hour, unfortunately, into the tape. Commentator's curse. <laughs> My bad. But you can see the speed on it. If she gets hot with that, uh, it's, it's a special thing to watch. This is feeling back to serve again. All ACC freshman team. Her mom played here at Arkansas for Coach Poole when he was building and establishing this program at Arkansas. Played up nicely by Rothman, sent over by Koenig, and out of that, out of system, Florida State still gets the point. And it started with Phelan making a diving play. She slid all the way across the court. The woman at the top of that list, also from the state of Florida, Mary Wise. Florida Gators. This is Phelan back to serve. Now, talked about her mom playing here at Arkansas for Coach Poole, her dad. Apparently, he was at the Jones Center about a block away, the training table, wearing his razor back hat the other day. Jason Watson spotted him, and Jason said he's going to get that out of the rotation early in the week so he could be all Seminoles later in the week. 
I believe he played golf here at Arkansas. So uh, the storylines here and the ties are, uh, are many this weekend. Tennis athlete, there's an answer from TCU. Horn Frogs still have time, Ryan, but it does feel like they're in that, uh, that danger zone. This is where Florida State calls this the red zone, like football, trying to go in from the 20-yard line, trying to score touchdowns to finish games off. This is their red zone, but. Yeah, I mean, they need to make random plays like that. I mean, there was just a scramble play, uh, and TCU found a way just to kind of overpower it, and they were going to have to scramble their way through this. Uh, Florida State tried to call timeout, but it was a little late right there. See if they pay the price for it. Green serving for the Horn Frogs. Couple of points here in a row for TCU. That one is going to be played over. Almost looked like a miss hit there from Roby. Conley gets the kill. Senior well, doesn't get a lot of playing time, but she got one. Yeah, well, and Coach Poole's scratching his head like, well, I'm glad that timeout didn't happen. <laughs> TCU's margin of error is pretty small getting towards the end of this first set. That'll help. Just thrown down from Knowles. Second time FSU has been in a questioning mode on this play. What do you see, Ryan? Uh, it's pretty close. Uh, I, I, I probably would have called it, but it's just a little odd for an outside hitter to do it. That, that looked almost more like a middle attack. There's the block from TCU. This was a team that had 22 blocks at Oklahoma early in the year, and that was an easy one to allow them to climb a little bit closer. Yeah, their offense isn't rolling right now, so they're going to have to rely on that and make some plays. A um, little surprised Florida State didn't take a timeout right here, uh, but he knows his team. Nicholson serving. Florida State trying to come back with an answer. There's another block. It was Sylvester and Knowles, <laughs> and that's going to force, I think, Florida State into a timeout. It was really close for them, but they found a way when they needed to against Baylor especially. Nicholson's been a big part of the team this year. We'll explain later on. Serving now with TCU down two. Can Florida State find an answer after the timeout? And they do as they go right back to Conley. That's a couple of kills in a row. Oh, that's a chess match right there. The middles for TCU did. They committed to the outside or release. They left her one-on-one -on, -one on the right side, but then they trusted her, set her the ball, and she got a kill after getting blocked last time. So that was a little bit of chess match right Indeed. there. Indeed. Holquist is going to come in and serve. Checking out his Roby. Hometown product serving to the Horn Frogs. Just about got an ace. Played up, and TCU will win the point. Unable to handle that cleanly was Koning from the back row. Nall's hits with such a heavy arm. It, when she's over there on the right side, she normally hits on the left. But in that one rotation, she has to be on the right side of the court. She usually tries to go down the line or into that middle back, and it just had too much speed to be able to handle it. Got some powerful swingers in this first matchup, and a good one as we expected between Florida State and TCU. Poked back by the Seminoles. Trying to wait to see when Para might be able to get going. Played up by Nicholson. That gets some hands. It did, and the Horn Frogs within a point late in set one. TCU starting to trust their out of system swings a little bit more, and, and they're getting rewarded for it. Phelan made a great dig as well, but uh, didn't get rewarded for it at the end of the rally. Momentum has switched just a bit. Oh my goodness, there's Parr. That was up in her eyesight where all she had to do was hammer it down. Yeah, that was a little bit of a gift for her. That's a momentum changer, but uh, pretty easy for her, the level athlete she is, but it, it's always impressive to watch. Almost four and a half kills per set. She's been a little bit quiet here in this first set. All of a sudden, this one is tied at 23. Can Florida State answer? Set was a little bit behind. Rothman. Now a chance for the Horn Frogs. Great effort by Koenig. TCU with the dig. Played up again by AK from the back row. Well, that just about found the real estate in the back corner. Oh, That's no. an unfortunate way for that long rally to end. 
Oh, what a critical point. I mean, that's one of those things you just got to move on. But Jayla Gibson took some huge rips in transition and then just running into each other on a crazy rally. How about the effort from Koenig out of the back row playing a couple of those balls up for Florida State? One of them she just slapped at. I mean, that was a car crash. Three frogs going down at the same time, and the ball landing untouched. Set point for the Seminoles. Para says, not on my watch, and we're tied again. Great swing. She, you know, one of the things she does is she doesn't hit low seam very often. She's really good at hitting the edges of the block. If she can't get a clean swing, she's really good at using the edge of the block. She did it there, got a point, 24 all. Can TCU come back and take the lead? They will. It wasn't that long ago. It was 23-20 Florida State. And all of a sudden, we've been at set point for FSU. Now we're at set point for TCU. Back serving for the Horn Frogs is Bram Schreiber from the same high school that produced Bumper Pool, Arkansas Razorback linebacker, serving here at set point. Florida State trying to even things up. Does that swing in? It is not, and TCU, Ryan, has come all the way back to take set one. The server did a great job hit, hitting that same spot. And media obligations and, and just the ability to go with the flow and figure it out is a, is a huge piece of the puzzle. Speaking of going with the flow, here's Nicholson. She took over as the setter right before the Texas match when they needed to make a change in the heat of battle, and TCU wins that point. And that's really been one of the storylines this year as well for the Frogs, trying to get her up to speed and involved with these good hitters. Yeah, in, in an offensive system like Jason Williams like, likes to run, there's a lot of pressure on her shoulders for a freshman to be able to force the tempo. And as Jason Williams says, he likes this point. It'll be interesting to see what happens. So TCU is in rotation one, and they put Nalls on the right side. This is that one time she's over here. Be interested to see if they actually go to her because that's what they love to do, or do they try to set it up for later when they're in this rotation by sending it to a middle or sending it to the outside? Roby serving. <laughs> Missed timing there, and Florida State will take the free point. They chose the setup for later route. Uh, just missed time, mistouched it. See what they do here. Off the hands of Lewis. Oh my goodness, what a swing, what a kill from Rothman. That was a great swing down the line. But if you watch the replay, really what happens is they have to worry about the middle for Florida State so much that uh, Nall stays with it a little bit and then is late to the block. She rips it down the line. That was all that Nicholson wanted to handle and more. She's trying to play that one up. Serving short, it's going to be an ace, and this is already a 4 nothing Florida State lead here in set two. Yeah, we were talking late in the first set, like Florida State was struggling, but they didn't look like it emotionally. They just looked like it was every point that they played all season, so, and they're showing uh, that early in this second set. Nice run by Roby, can she keep it going? Net call on Florida State. And that'll end the 4 nothing. Seminoles run, TCU glad to have that point. They are, they, they usually do really well in that rotation, so it was a little odd to see them get stuck in it. Um, but they had a, mi a miscommunication early on in that rotation, and then Setter went back to what she was comfortable with, and Nulls eventually got him out of it. Nulls serving, young lady in high school, she was doing rodeo in addition to volleyball, so not your normal background. Florida State able to keep that alive, even though that was stuffed at the net. There's Parr, she had the five kills, not this time, played up by Rothman. One of the longer rallies, when will it end? And that swing was long out of bounds. Great dig by Florida State. TCU in the middle of that rally went to the middle in transition, which they rarely do. Uh, Florida State was there to dig it, uh, missed the swing in transition though. Two straight points by TCU, the tip had to be played up by the Horned Frogs. Para, big swing, and uh, was she out on that one? She must yeah, have been. They called out. We don't have a good view of that, but <laughs> we did not the athleticism <laughs> to do that, she, that's impressive. She went thumb down, hit the left side of the ball. Uh, the court was wide open, which kind of surprises me because she does love that shot, um, but she'll find a way to score it later.
Druskovich serving. Parr just pushes that one, but again, unable to keep it in play. So Florida State back to a four-point cushion. The set was a little tight. She tried to do what she could with it. Parra was able to get a head of steam behind her on that one. Yeah, she tends to like it a little bit higher. It's kind of funny talking to Coach Jason Williams about it. They love to run the fast tempo, but to be honest, at times when she's on the outside, she just likes the high ball. She can go see the block and then go rip it's at it. It's a vision it. thing, right? What, efficiency? A vision. Oh, a vision, yes. I think she can see it. She stays behind the ball well, and then she can just go rip at it. Gives her that extra split second just to yeah. turn it loose, and all of yeah. a sudden the Horned Frogs, just as they did in set one, didn't panic. Ryan, and that's what impressed me. They were down 22-17 in that first set, came back to win, down 4 nothing early, but they didn't show that, uh, that emotion that would let you believe that they're on the ropes. Yeah, well, both teams are doing that right now, but they're doing it in their own style. TCU's doing it with more of a party, fun atmosphere. They have <laughs> girls doing the worm uh, in between sets. And then Florida State's just business as usual, just kind of calm, uh, very much like Chris Poole's personality. So both of them aren't in a situation where they're freaking out, but they're both doing it in their style, which is kind of cool to see. It is, and maybe that's why we expected this to be maybe a matchup far beyond kind of a 2-3 in the course of this bracket. Teams that had designs or could have possibly been a one, who knows. Arkansas SFA winner will get the winner of this one, and that is going to be a Florida State point. Corey Lewis with just the athleticism to go shut that down. TCU trying to get the middles involved, and it is one-on-one, -on -one and she just dives in and gets it, and that's, that's a good sign for uh, Florida State because now they can put their resources on the pins where TCU likes to set the ball most of the time anyways. Audrey Rothman serving, 19 aces this year. That one hit the antenna. Going to be an easy point for FSU. Parr is able to hang in the air. She glides a little bit, even if that set's not perfect, but uh, she just couldn't handle that one. That's why I love to watch her play. It's just athleticism. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to uh, find many athletes in the country like that. Powerful swing from Gibson. And the Seminoles able to extend their advantage. Again, I think you got to give Florida State's middles credit for that. That was a one-on-one -on -one swing because they had to respect the middles, and then she can go find the hole and score a point. Maddie Snyder out of Lando Lakes, Florida. Another left-handed swing. That's going to be a kill. So Maddie Snyder did come in with huge numbers, but she's had an impact in this match. Yeah, and they went they went back to what they normally do. Conley's at 3:33, so that's a good start for the right sides for Florida State. After the timeout, there's the big swing from Para. When TCU needs an answer, no surprise, they find number 23. Again, another ball that had a little bit more time for her to get to up over the top of the block. Might have hit the seam a little bit. We don't have a good perspective, but uh, she needs that time sometimes. Gibson serving. She's dealt with a strange tonsil issue this year. When you talk about injuries for TCU and you start talking about her tonsil situation and the inflammation and procedures done, that takes it to an entirely different injury level. Yeah, not only that, they had coaches that were right before matches having to go. And so it was an interesting year, but they're in the NCAA tournament. I think you're happy when all of that is passed and you're fielding at top strength this late in the year. And they got that first set win, and here they come again in set two. Yeah, creative shot out of the back row for Nalls. Perfect location. This isn't easy to do. Well, that was hammered down by Koenig. And it started with the freshman Philomoa with an, um, a beautiful pass. She has great touch. She has the ability just to hold her platform right where she needs it, put it right on top of the setter's head, and it was a really easy side out for them. Philomoa serving. Paro, another swing angle. I'm a little surprised that the, the 
side of the court that she's swinging at. Philomo is sinking into the court. She loves to hit that cross court ball. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Philomo stay on the sideline a little bit more as this unfolds. Keep in mind, she was the hitter who started the year and had to take on a different role at some point. Dupes was hurt early in their scrimmage with an ACL. A lot of changes after that. Quick kill there from Roby in the middle. Yeah. Parra had to take a little bit off that serve. You know, Coach Jason Williams talked a little bit about how she rips it, and we asked him about the risk versus reward, and he said she's good about understanding when she can't go rip at it, and that was one of those balls. But I see next time, after seeing the result of that, I could see the next time she goes back to serve ripping at it. What did he say? Her option B is gnarly? Was that the term he used? Yeah, a little. <laughs> Well, TCU had a chance to respond after that one was blocked, but couldn't play it up. They blocked it right off someone's head out of bounds. The middle was there to cover, and it happened so fast. Hit her in the head and went out of bounds. Watch this one fall just out of the reach of Audrey Knowles. And this is Phelan back to serve again, Fayetteville native. Handled by Rothman. Bump set for Knowles. And FSU builds their largest lead here of set two. We can't see that sideline, but a lot of balls are out right there. <laughs> they must be. We're looking through about 60 people for that vantage point. FSU still hitting at a 320 percentage of the course of this match. And that one just rolled down by Koenig. Great shot by her, but what I love is the libero from Florida State. What presence to know where her feet were. She jumps at the ball. The Phelan serving again, all ACC freshman team performer. From the middle going quickly was Green. And that one just put down from the middle as well by Roby. I love what Phelan just did there. She, she set the ball to her. It was a, not a great set. Florida State figured out how to score, but she looked right at her middle and said, my bad. Even though they scored the point, she was still connecting with her. She put both hands on her shoulders, looked in her eyes, said, hey, I'll get you a better one next time so you can trust me. Well, I like that. That is not a freshman move. That's a coach's kid agree. right there. <laughs> it does help to be fully invested mm -hmm. in the sport. Para sent that one towards the back seats. Off the slide. The swing by Green. Still alive. Poked over and played up by Rothman. Koning couldn't terminate. From the back row, Parr with some heat, but just a little bit long. I thought she had enough drop that it might find some real estate, but it did not. They're, they're talking to Coach Jason about should we challenge here. I don't know if they're asking for a touch or out of bounds, but trying well, to figure out what to do here. This is a 6-0 FSU run. Coach Williams maybe thinking out. It remains Florida State point, no touch. Kenneth Phelan's going on quite a run here from the service line. This is a good rotation for him. The Horn Frogs are in a little bit of a diff difficult rotation if they're not in system. TCU needs to find some answers. Hit the ball into the net. Right into the net. Interesting, on that serve receive pattern, right before Florida State served the ball, they set up with the libero in middle back, TCU does, and then right before it, Para moved over and she backed up. Let's see if they do it again. This is now a 7-0 run by the Seminoles. You talk about extended runs against good teams. It's really hard to have 7-0. <laughs> Philomawa handled it. And there's a mistake that TCU will gladly accept. They need that, and they got to find a way to build off of it. it. 
it might not be about winning this set. Yeah, you, oh, you want to stay in it, but more than anything, you want to start playing your brand of volleyball. You want to get into a situation where you're playing a little cleaner, and then, hey, maybe you come up with a set, but let's get some momentum rolling. Green serving for TCU. Par with the steam, and she's going to get the kill from the back. She's going to have to take over if they're going to get back into the set. TCU went with a triple block. They randomly do that out of uh, out of system situations, uh, and they ended up getting the dig, and then Para put the wet ball away out of middle back. Ten kills for Para. Second most by anybody in this match is six, and you see her hitting percentages well. Got those fingers taped. Young lady from Mexico, former Texas Longhorn, putting forth a great season as a Horned Frog. See that one was long coming off that initial serve, and it's 19-11. And, and Jason Williams shakes his head yes, claps his hand, and you think, well, why is that? Well, you're down eight points. You might as well rip the serve and maybe get into a run here. So he wants him to stay aggressive. That rode the tape for a long time, but carried on out. Jason's scratching his head right now going, well, that's one of those sets, ball like that that rolls on the tape for six, about six feet and it rolls <laughs> yeah. out of bounds. You just go, well. You just don't feel like it's your, uh, your set, to say the least. TCU gets an answer. But there's TCU aggressive offense. That was a really fast paced ball to the outside. She ripped it down the line. There's not much you can do about that if you're Florida State. Knowles with the kill. And this is Nicholson serving. Point so TCU. Feeling forced that ball to her on the right side. Last earlier in the set one, she went back to her off an air. So let's see if she does that. But when Rothman passes the ball like she just did, she actually hits a little better after she passes the ball. Almost like a give and go in basketball. I like it. Just getting involved and being active in that sequence. Gibson was backing up to get a little power on that swing, and she'll get the kill. She did. She's taking some nice rips today. Her numbers aren't necessarily reflecting uh, what's the swings that she's taking, but I think if she keeps it up, she's going to find some success as the night goes. She's been in double figures and kills 21 times this year for a team that's played 30 games, so obviously a big part of the offense. Soft little float serve was handled by FSU, and then the kill from Conley. Conley ripped at it, but feel a freshman setting like that in her hometown, all the pressure, she just flings this ball across the court, leaves a huge hole, and they can put that away at a high level. Roby serving. Young lady didn't even play high school volleyball beyond one year before she came to school. Seems a little bit unique. <laughs> that means she's got a lot more in her tank to keep <laughs> right? learning, and that's that's impressive. No, that's, I think that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, the, the development of volleyball, it takes a long time to get good at this game, and so her ceiling, she's probably not even close to yet. Still kind of processing getting better? Yeah. Feeling with the bump set. Rothman took the swing, and out of that, out of system, they get the kill, and they're two points away from an evening up this match. Yeah, Florida State's doing Florida State things. They're hitting 295. They're right there. That's their season average. That's why they're top 10 in the country in efficiency. Sent back. Still played over by Parra. Great effort by Rothman. A long rally and it ends with a kill from Knowles. Great swing to the deep corner. That's the rotation they got stuck in earlier, so it's nice to see him get out of it. But that took a long rally to get there. Think about Knowles. She loves these postseason matches. Last year when they had the win against Washington in round one, she had 25 kills. Sometimes you see a serve like that. After a long rally, you've hit a bunch of balls. You go back to the service line. You might be a little tired after a long rally like that. It does move FSU to set point. TCU came back and won that first one, 
Florida State. Trying to even this one all up. And a set of peace. Serving is Droskovic. Para with some steam right off the hands of Philomawa. What a great swing. I and mean, the ball is a little bit more to your left than you think it is if you're the libero. She just has a way of putting speed on it, and you can't get there, and you see that by Philomawa. I think she'll make that adjustment, find a way to dig that more as the match goes. Rem Schreiber serving for TCU. And found just enough to get that back corner, and Florida State wins a 25-16, even in a set of pieces. We switch sides in 2011. Of course, they'd love to get back this year. It's in their home state in Tampa. And for the Horn Frogs, their fifth appearance. Best run is the second round, so they'd love to get to the Sweet 16, no matter who they might have to play in Kentucky or beyond. And we're off and rolling in set three, maybe a do or die set three for one of these teams. They've come out. With some big time swing showing you the urgency of this third set. Off the hands, played up again by Koning, but she couldn't save it. And the kill goes to Jalen Gibson. TCU's taking rips, like you said. And you know, that, that's their identity. And so with the way they play volleyball, they're going to have ups and downs. They're not going to be the super consistent team like Florida State is. They're going to have their ups and downs with how they go about their offensive systems. Just wasn't in the proper place for an opportunity for FSU to get the kill. Phelan played it in the net. Florida State played it over. But TCU's come out with the first two points in our third set. Yeah, Jalen Gibson, she's finally starting to get a little more rewarded uh, for her swings. I've loved the swings she's taken today. She's just getting uh, into the positive. That's her fourth kill, so uh, that, that's a good sign for TCU. You thought earlier this week this might be one of the best opening matches and you know sometimes you get the ones and the fours within the course of the quads these two and threes are always really exciting but this just had the possibility the way both of these teams have found their health and certainly their stride here at the end of the year yeah they, they both that was interesting talking to both coaches they both felt about the same about their teams they're walking into these matches feeling like hey we're the healthiest we've been we've been able to kind of figure out our system we haven't been able to practice it all year we've started to a little bit uh, so it's interesting to hear that comparison of the teams you always hate it when you get to the end of the year and you've lost a key player, you're a little bit out of gas. Just the opposite here with these two, but Florida State could use a point in this third set. They might feel like they let that one slip away in the first. Big swing by Para. We've got a touch on it. Thought we had a touch. Florida State a little perplexed, but they're not gonna challenge it. The players weren't arguing it too much, so that's usually a good sign. No, I'll serve it. There's an angry answer from Rothman. Again, the TCU right side block has to respect the middles, and so then it leaves the line open a little bit or the seam, and she gets it right there, as you can see, because you have to respect the athleticism in the middle and it just allows things to open up for you on the outside. A little finesse from Parra. Florida State needed that one too. What an odd sequence. Well, Florida State, bitch, had a lot of fun with that because they wanted some throws called earlier, and that one was a little bit on the border, and so they had a little extra communication to the refs. <laughs> Droskovich serving for the Seminoles at 4 2. There's the power, but again, that's probably the third or fourth time today it feels like Parra has had a big swing, but not kept it in bounds. Yeah, it was close, and the ball was so fast that the setter for Florida State even really couldn't get in the position to dig it. Uh, Parra just mishit it a little bit. And look, she's passing half of the floor right now. Wasn't exactly handled cleanly by Ramschreiber, but played over. Just a miss it from Nicholson. And she tried to get her feet there. Her hands were a little wide and slipped through. Sometimes as the match gets going, it gets sweaty. There gets uh, sweat on the ball, and it makes it a little bit harder for the setter to handle. Interesting something you said. How much for a setter is footwork getting in the right spot so your hands can go to work? Yeah, it kind of depends on the situation. She tried to get both feet there, and it looked a little late. And so that might have messed with her hands a little bit for as far out of system as it was. How about a 4-0 TCU run and then a 4-0 FSU run? And now maybe TCU starting another one of them, their own. Yeah, Gibson with another great rip. 
I like her demeanor right now. She looks like she wants to compete. She's talking to her teammates a lot. Both teams have a level of security in playing their game right now. It's fun to watch. Gibson came in hitting 256 for the year. Pretty good hitting percentage number. And TCU gets another point. And I think the fun part, and we'll see it later on tonight with Arkansas and SFA, but you start to have teams where they have so many weapons. It's I think sometimes they put these matchups together for good reason, like a Texas and Texas A&M or like Florida State coming here. And the call stands and it's TCU's point. It's a good spot for TC to be in. They're up to, they got Melanie Parra in middle front. Maybe they can go on a little bit of a run with her front row and make some separation. Each team with one challenge remaining unless we get to a fifth, and we very well may. Par waiting, trying to time her leap. Left-handed swing from Snyder. Back set to Gibson. And Rothman with the kill for Florida State. Philemo with it, a great set. She kind of kept it in system for her. Look at that. She looks like a setter out there. Gave her a good ball, a little off the net, but Rothman did something with it. Looks like it hit the hand. Consider those red sleeves as well because it's pretty easy to spot. We've got dueling dance competitions going on. <laughs> I would say neither of these teams too, uh, too tense. They both felt like they won the dance off too, so. It's still going on. I don't even think DJ Derrick is here, and yet uh, the tunes are blowing. So instead of 6 5, it's 7 4 TCU. A real good challenge by Coach Williams. There's more communication with the table. Confusion might be a better word at the time being. I feel like they're doing a server check trying to figure out who should be serving. All right, we're settled in now. Okay, good. I'd hate to be unsettled at this point. <laughs> Block down. That was easy by TCU. A combination of Gibson and Green at the tape. From our perspective, it looked like Rothman didn't get her feet quite there and tried to turn it down the line, but just didn't have enough angle. And uh, Gibson did a great job just getting her hands over the net and blocking it to the floor. Ryan, uneducated volleyball guy here. It feels like we've had more four and five point swings than I would have anticipated considering the talent on both of these teams. Um, I, I think a lot of it has to do with their rotations, their systems a little bit. Okay. Yeah, rotational matchups. Uh, the Florida State, from a rotational perspective, they have a lot. This is new for Arkansas. It's been a couple of decades since they've had the opportunity to host it. I would imagine we will have a huge crowd here for our second match, but uh, a great beginning to the day. And Florida State needs some answers, and maybe that's the beginning of a run for the Seminoles. Yeah, that rotation, they don't normally set her on the right side. So I think they talked about in the timeout and said, hey, let's let's give it a shot. we got to get ourselves into it, set some stuff up for later when they're in that rotation. There's Para. Played up by Koenig. Para again. Unable to get that kill. There's some hands, and AK Koenig with the touch and the kill. And if you notice in that rally, when Para for TCU went to swing, Florida State was keeping their left front and their left back libero. They stayed on that sideline a little bit more like we were talking about. They made the adjustment. They got an easy dig. They ended up getting the kill later. Uh-oh, that one's going to end up in the stands. Gibson starting to heat up. Another great swing. She might have the tendency to get overlooked just a bit with the huge season that Parra has had. And again, Gibson missed some time with that tonsil issue. But 23 kills against UCF earlier this year. Maybe a big match today. Three frogs right there at the net to send one back. Two frogs blocked that one. Philomo covered two balls. The third one, she finally missed hit, but she was helping her team extend the rally. But TCU's block was great during that whole sequence. 
See six arms there. Watch this slide and four arms with the block. TCU for the match hitting only 167, so they've needed to find some different ways maybe to get kills and leads. Now that was angled beautifully, but maybe there was a touch. It was out on the initial call, the swing from Snyder. Florida State was hoping for a touch. The ball got a little tight. She dropped her elbow and she ripped at it, but it was one-on-one. -on -one. I, I know she wants that one back. If you're Florida State, what is the deficit that you're starting to get concerned with? I don't know. I've watched this Florida State team long enough. I don't think they get too fr frazzled by anything. They just kind of keep doing their thing. A couple of times they've been a blink of an eye from being down seven, yet they win the point and the kill from Koenig. She ripped that ball. That had some speed on it. It looked like, if we can see on the replay, it might have blown the middle's left hand away. I don't know, but she had some speed. No, she just hit inside it. Powered one down to the court. Philomawa serving for FSU. Almost a free point there for the Seminoles. I actually like that decision by Nicholson. She just mishit it. Uh, Watch for the serve coming up, though. Philomo has served. She, she's gone on runs a lot lately, and a lot of times the ball will just drop off. It's a nice floater, no spin, and it just drops at the last moment sometimes. Back row attack by Knowles. She ripped it. Just a moment ago, I was asking you about what deficit you'd be concerned with, and FSU's gone on a 3-0 run. And when we were talking with Coach Poole in our, our call last week, he, one of the things he talked about was just, I asked him, what about this team gets overlooked? And he said their resiliency, their ability to fight back, deal with adversity. Like He's really proud of how they've done that, and they're doing it even in sets as they go about You're things. Right. And it's, it's pretty impressive for such a young team to be able to do that. But I think that's credit to the coaching staff. They don't seem to stress out about too much. They have their system. They have their style. And they just keep playing Florida State Volleyball. Well, I think it's a good point. It's not just within the confines of match to match. Sometimes they're even set to set. It's certain runs within the course or structure of a set. This is Para with the heat, but she's had a couple of misfires. That ball's moving. <laughs> yeah, you're thankful if you're FSU and you see that end up in the net. Yeah, she... Uh, her ace percentage is at about 10, and her air percentage is at about 20. So two of 10 are airs, and one out of 10 is an ace. So, uh, but when it gets hot, it's impressive. Tell you who went on a run behind the service line earlier for FSU. It was Fila, and that's where she is now for Florida State. I think that was touched <laughs> by Roby. She came over the net. She's just so athletic. She just jumped up and almost took it out of the setter's hands. She was too excited. You know, that might be an intimidation factor. That might be kind of like the beginning of a basketball game where you take a goaltend just to show it, you can do it. Like, she was in her face just saying, give me that ball. Does allow TCU, though, to go behind the line, serve, and be up four. I think we had a foot fault on the serve. What a costly mistake that would be. For someone that... Self-proclaims not seeing knowing volleyball. You saw that pretty quick. How does that happen? I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> it, just a little lack of concentration. This is Koenig. Again, we had that mini joust right there at the tape. Florida State showing off its size. Philomawa with the back set. Rothman doesn't get the kill. There's the block from FSU. The athleticism in the middle wins that point, but I was impressed by both liberos with great sets. Good location by both of them. One of them with their hands in Florida State, the other one with TCU in the bump set, but in the end, great left hand by number 25. Oh, costly time for a service error from Koenig. You've talked a little bit about the adjustments back and forth. Are we at that point where these teams have a pretty good idea what the other is going to do, or will these adjustments even ratchet up as we get deeper into this match? Yeah, the chess match will continue. A lot of the matchups are the same, uh, just in terms of the rotation. So 
They're starting to figure one another out. They played each other early in the year. The coaches can act like that doesn't matter, but it matters. You can watch video all day, but there's something about live, seeing the speed, the height. Uh, you're starting to figure out, just like what we talked about Florida State holding the sideline a little bit more. The chess match now will start to begin as this unfolds. Think about that TCU win on September 15th. If they don't win that, they probably don't get in. You're 15 and 15, and you don't have that quality win. Now they're trying to win to advance to play Arkansas or SFA tomorrow. Middles for Florida State holding the blockers, one on none. You're going to put that away all day long, Florida State. Here's the rotation one for TCU. Let's see if they go back to Nalls right away to create separation. They love to set her here. They're going to be forced to. Lewis couldn't put it down from the middle. That one hit some hands, and TCU has built a four-point lead, getting a little bit later here in our third. And Gibson did a great job. This was She normally plays on the right side. She was just on the left. The ball was a little tight. It was an out-of-system ball. She changed the trajectory of your arm, dropped her elbow, and hit it flat off the top of the blocker's hands. That was impressive. Like that. Serve, receive has been a little bit challenging here as of late. Played up by Philomawa. Played over by Koenig. And a big swing from Gibson. Five point Horn Frog lead. Another great swing by her. She, she doesn't take a lot off the ball. No matter what position not. her body is in, whether she's leaning back, she's forward, it's away from the match. Uh, right now, uh, look for the ball to go outside if it's in system, but we'll see. Null serving. Almost a free ball, and that was just way too easy. We talked about Gibson. That's the easiest kill she's going to get, or did she go over? Did she go over that tape uh, to touch it? No, no. I think what Florida State's asking for is that she was in the net, uh, but I didn't see it, and the players aren't arguing about it too much. Well, that's the easiest kill she'll get all night. Yeah. What a great effort. Did that go behind the antenna? I think it did, right? It did. Great effort. The line judge was right on it, but great effort. Uh, they're going to ha probably have to get a towel to wipe the sweat. Coach Jason Williams is already on it. Look at him go. He said, don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> he's an athlete. He's, he'll figure it out. Oh, oh, now he's pointing out. Yeah, now he's doing the coaching. You don't want to get those nice shoes dirty at all, you know. You know, he talked about his team coming here at 16 and 14. Maybe sneaking in the tournament late. TCU's baseball team did the same thing, and they came to Arkansas, and they absolutely left a path of destruction all the way to the College World Series. They were trying to find some similarities maybe to what their baseball team coming to Fayetteville did. Uh, it's almost a tough thing to bring up with the uh, local fans because they outscored the Hawks 32 to 9 in two games. Well, when you talk with them, one of the things that because of the injuries, that year one, they just fully committed to side out volleyball and offense. And they did a great job getting the tournament. So then this spring, they worked on defense and blocking and figuring out their defensive systems. But then once all the injuries happened, they just had to kind of just survive. Piece, yeah, survive, piecemeal it together, figure it out. And so they, they got away from some of that defensive and blocking stuff. But now that they're kind of getting into a rhythm, now they can work on blocking and scheme blocking and figure out what they're going to do f defensively. So as the season goes, if they can get into a run, they can do some damage because they're now just starting to figure out things where other teams haven't had it figured out for a month, and now they're just trying to eke out a little bit here, a little bit there. You're right. Lewis provided a quick kill from the middle for Florida State to keep the Seminoles in this third set. They're not out of it yet. When the middles get hot like, like that, Florida State is definitely a juggernaut. Rothman serving. Again, she did not play when these teams met back in September. Had a concussion she was dealing with. I'll tell you what, we feature Gibson, and she's come out even since that package, and I think she's added three more kills. She doesn't care about a commentator's curse. She's got the opposite. <laughs> she's lighting it up. And, and now she's back to serve. It's nice because Para hasn't had to do it, so her shoulder's taking some rest. Her legs are taking some rest. When you play back-to-back -back days, if you can win this match, that's important. Valid point. And she adds an ace to her night. The smile on her teammates' faces, they, they like watching her have some success. Pretty stoic countenance right there. Not a lot of emotion, just goes about her business. She lets her teammates do it for her, which is cool. 
Left-handed swing from Snyder. Doesn't result in a kill. That one was played over. And the elevation by Corey Lewis gives FSU their 17th point. Played off Nicholson, off her shoulder. Kind of turned her shoulder just a bit, too. Unable to be saved by Ram Schreiber. So Philomo is a freshman, right? They had a, she was passing middle back. To her right was another freshman they put in as a DS. He's a little nervous because this is the first time she's played today. They served that seam. She had been struggling. Philomo, Philomo has scooted to her right. Nice, easy pass. They end up winning the ball in the end. Snyder, right down the line. Off the hands of Bram Schreiber. That's the swing down the line. She just missed earlier, but she refined it just enough to keep it in play. Had a lot of pace on it. Didn't have a lot of top spin. Kind of hard for Libero to dig it if it had a little bit of a floater. Philomoa, Washington Gatorade Player of the Year, also a beach volleyball player at FSU. Trying to lead her team in a nice run here. Late, just hammered down, and all of a sudden TCU is at set point. Florida State setter was a little frustrated with herself right there, it looked like, and maybe because she didn't go back to Snyder, because she, tip, she typically goes back to Snyder after a kill, and she didn't do it that time. I'm wondering if that's what's going on inside her head. Here's the serve from par that we've been waiting to see, and Florida State couldn't handle it. Nice timing to win a set off of it. TCU won the first. Florida State, the sex. Uh, stubborn, and I mean that in a positive way. They, they know their rotations. They like them. They like the matchups right now. That shows some confidence in Florida State, saying, hey, we like these matchups. We just got to go execute a little better. Quick kill from Roby at FSU. Boy, FSU, Florida State did not hit well at all on that third. No, they're way below their average, but that won't last for long. They're too efficient. Kiari Roby, second team all ACC. Out of Atlanta, serving for the Seminoles. Quick kill and an answer from Audrey Knowles. They love setting her back there in that rotation. They've struggled in a little bit tonight, so I, I bet they're feeling good about that. They're getting back to normal in that rotation. Knowles over 1,000 kills in her TCU career. Back to serve. Almost got the ace, but Florida State able to handle it. Para gets the big swing and a kill, and that is number 14 for Melody Para. She has the ability to go thumb down and hit the left side of the ball, which, again, it makes it hard for if you're in left back. It's just a little bit more to the left than you think it is. And Philemon knew it. As soon as that happened, she put her hands to her head like, come on, you know that. And so she'll, she'll, she's young. She'll figure it out. She's got great touch. That's a pretty nice job by Nicholson. Poked over. Parra again, off the hands, played up by Gibson. Another swing for Parra, more of a poke. That just rolled up the face of Lily Nicholson and down. That's a good swing for Rothman, another good sign for Florida State. If she's getting swings like that out of system, uh, it'd probably be a little bit of a different set for them this set. Florida State's hitting percentage about 40, 50 points better than TCU, despite the fact TCU's up two to one. Para was long on the swing. She's done that four or five times. She's working this left sideline. Again, Philomo looks at her coach saying, my bad, because she had sucked into the court. She got a little lucky on that one. That's just, just part of the game understanding. And you read something by Para, but then she has the ability to turn it last minute. It's a tough challenge for Libero. Jalen Gibson's having a night. That ball almost made it to the second tier of the bleachers up there. That went flying. Hitting 370 on the night. 13 kills for Gibson. And that expression hasn't changed. 
put down quickly from the middle for FSU. Great first touch by Florida State. Puts them in their offense. When they pass well, they're a juggernaut. They're hard to stop. Florida State also has Koenig coming back front row. Look for them to feed her. She's playing really well right now. Nine kills, 368. Look for her to try to get some points through this three rotations. Sent back. Great effort by Knowles and played over. Exciting rally and the kill comes from the middle and Corey Lewis and all of a sudden the middle's doing some damage again for Florida State. Great effort by TCU, but in system balls for TCU. Gonna have a hard time stopping, but did love the effort. You know, Coach Poole told us about coming back to Arkansas. It's going to be emotional. He said, I'm not playing Arkansas. I'm playing TCU. He knows that now because this is a do-or-die set for his team. And they're trying to find a way to force a fifth and swing this momentum back and forth again. And here come the Knowles. The angle which Koenig hit that ball. I mean, it hit, uh, hit Para on the left side of her body, and she's standing about eight feet from the net. She's playing at a high level. Worth repeating, this was the automatic qualifier out of the ACC, even though Pitt is a number one seed, which is a little bit unusual when you consider that. But Florida State has designs on continuing this streak, but that service error does not help. Gibson's been everywhere tonight from the middle. Big swing and a kill from Knoll. She's also at a fine match. And for Knoll, she reaches double figures with what should be her 10th kill. Yeah, that was just pure speed and power on that ball. Philomo was in a great spot, but just overpowered it with her speed on the ball. Quick answer. Powerful so, kill from Koenig. Yeah, Koenig, the last ball she went hit sharp angle, four to four is what we'd say in volleyball. And then that one she went more deep corner. So she's playing that little chess match of, okay, you try to figure out where I'm at and keep them on their toes. It's a high level volleyball swings from an outside. Philip Mala serving. Par with the power and par with the kill. 15 for Melody. Both these teams, from a server seed perspective, are starting to settle in a lot more perfect passes and seeing a lot more first ball side out. So when you receive the ball, first time you have it, can you side out? Those numbers are starting to go up a little bit, it looks like, based on the server seeds. But here's no, I think a, it's a good point. Here's a great serve if it's in. Just an easy dump down from Nichols, or from Knowles, I should say. And that's not an ace, but it might as well be one. Yeah, it's. It's just, it's almost just as good. Let's see if she stays confident with it and keeps ripping. She's looked right where she was gonna serve. Let's see if she goes for it again. 50 to 55 miles an hour, all kinds of movement. And that one just about went to uh, the football building across the street. Risk and reward, I guess. Yeah, the little look on her face was kind of cool. She's kind of like, eh, yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> But you're right, we've had fewer 4 0 5 0 runs as we get deeper into this match. Yeah, I feel like that's a lot to have to do with serve receive. There's a ball that's not great in serve receive. Out of system ball. Null still ripped at it. The Florida, Florida State had four hands there just waiting on it. And that changes the game as an attacker. Not only one of those, you'll see it again. Joined by Roby, I believe. And this is a rotation for TCU who's got stuck in against rotation one with Thielen serving for Florida State. Watch for a back row attack, if possible. And a frog point. That was a uh, experienced play. There's a reason why she's in uh, her fourth or fifth year of playing volleyball. That, that was a hard swing, given the situation they were in. She was crafty, but she still kept speed on it. That was a nice swing. So TCU pulling the setter right now for a blocking sub. They do this every once in a while. Let's see what happens. Let's see who sets the second ball if they get into a rally. They don't. So Quick now answer. The, now the setter is subbing back in. So they're risking it. They're just putting their blockers up, hoping someone random will set it out of system. 
but it was too good a pass by Florida State. Wasn't effective. Clipped the tape, but played from the back row by Gibson. What a performance tonight from Jalen Gibson. And you got to give Lily Nicholson some credit. I looked at her right before the play. She looked at her. She gave her the signal, but she's like, hey, I'm coming to you. And she did, and it gave confidence to uh, Jalen to be able to rip at that ball. And this is Nicholson serving. Brock's trying to tie this up at 10 apiece. They won't get the chance. That one's in and down. Another ball tied to the net. Setter has three options. Blockers for TCU have to kind of commit to the middle. It's one-on-one -on -one over on the right side. Nice swing to squeeze it down the line. That's now eight kills by Conlon. It's heating up. Handle with a left hand by Koenig. Gibson. Was that one played up by Roby? And off the block and down on the kill from Rothman. We said at the beginning of the set, if she can swing it out of system balls and get kills on them, it'll be a good sign for them. They're up three. That's the second or third one I've seen her take. She's known for her in-system kills, but that was not a system ball, and she got one. So that's uh, give you confidence if you're Florida State. A helpless feeling for Conley. She tried to play that one again, and... Flick it over, didn't work. Did I miss that? Was that Gibson again with another kill? It was. She's 15 kills, 387. Mm. Handled by Parr, she might get a chance to swing again and will. Koenig laid it up and we just had, was someone touched the net or was over the? Uh, Kenna Felix set the ball, she jump set it, but when she landed, her feet were on the other side of the line. Uh -huh. In the way of TCU's middle, it becomes an injury situation, so you gotta blow the whistle. But the athleticism for her to even get to that point was really impressive. Oh goodness. Eyes got big for Para and she had an expression on her face like, I think I almost missed it. <laughs> She jumped a little early. The she ball did. was a little tight. <laughs> I, think, I think she's a little worried to get in the net, too. She was trying to take the air out of the ball with that swing and well, just about uh, didn't square it up. Hey, we're tied at 12. Briefly, Florida State back in front. That's impressive. Florida State in left back and middle back. 6-3, 6-4, serve, receive. Uh, that's just. That's unique, right? I mean. The game of volleyball is progressing so fast. That's just really fun to see. The athleticism, the size, the strength, it's uh, probably a different tier than it was 10 years ago. Yeah, it's like a 6'10 post playing point guard. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just crazy. we're seeing that too. Para, handled by Filamawa. Can TCU and Para get the kill? She tried to send that one down the line. Played up in the rafters nicely. Now over on three from Para. Almost got a kill out of that. The block sends it back. Boy, in a long rally. This could be one of these points that swings this set and maybe the match. Para's going to get her chance. She's going to get the kill. Another thumb down shot to the sideline. That took some courage. That took some energy. She waited on it. She ripped at it. Cecily Bramschreiber serving for the Frogs in this set tied at 13. Gibson again. What a night for Gibson. That was a great set, too. You got to give your setter credit on that one. It had a little distance to go. She was pushed to the left a little bit. But Gibson's trusting her right now, and that, that's hard as a right side to develop that connection. And they have a connection. She's waiting, and she's ripping at it. And you got to give Setter credit for that. Gibson's high, 23 kills at UCF. Who knows? Maybe she might get to that point. Certainly, if we go to a fifth, you'd think she would. And she was able to play that one over despite some traffic at her feet from Nicholson. Oh, 
down in Florida State. Felt like really kind of needed that one to even this back up again. A little bit of a chaotic rally, especially for TCU. They had some uh, frogs flying around, but Rothman with another great out of system swing. Just having a great out of system set here for the kill perspective. Florida State's a little confused trying to figure out who the next server is. Indeed they are. Sometimes after long rallies, you get excited, you get winded, kind of forget where you just were, and that, that looked like a... <laughs> that happens? <laughs> that does happen, but they got Koenig coming back front row. It's a good sign for Florida State. And it is Rothman serving, tied at 14 here in the fourth. Para with the heat. 18 hey. kills. Jason Williams was clapping, and I, I saw as soon as Nicholson set that ball, it came out. But hey, you got TCU That's first, right. and it's a challenge. It's been Gibson's night. She had an ace earlier, and again, that almost feels like one because Parr just rises up and pounds her 19th kill to the floor. What a, a great serve by Gibson. It feels a little bit like it did the first, the beginning of the first set, where it's either feast or famine. It's either a perfect pass, or we're having overpasses or shanks. So. A little bit of an interesting feel to it right now, and that's why the hitting percentages are going up because the, the passing is getting better. Really high for both teams in this fourth. Yeah, 440 and 393. Head of steam for Koenig and AK with the kill, and Florida State needed one to avoid maybe falling behind by three. That was just high level. And went through the seam, but it was also high enough to be up over the top, and it had a lot of pace on it. Her 12th kill, hitting 435. She leads Florida State. Philomawa serving for the Seminoles and a little extra juice on that one for the year. The next time she comes back to serve, it'll be interesting. I can see it dropping because she's going to take a little bit off. She doesn't want to do that again. We've got to keep an eye on that in six rotations or next time she serves. It could turn into an ace. You see that a lot of times. But speaking of aces, now, considering the magnitude, do you turn this one loose again or do you take a little bit off? Up to her, and I think that's what Coach Nicholson says. He just kind of lets her go. I think we know what the answer is going <laughs> to be. <laughs> she hit the tape but doesn't get the ace. TCU, can they play it up? They do. What's amazing, Florida State didn't get a quick point there. And then Adams gets the kill. She hasn't played much after an incredible career, getting an opportunity now. And what a big point for and the Horn Frog. And this is a great time. I, I didn't catch it. They took the setter out. They got the blocking sub. You got this lethal uh, server. They're risking it. They're going for it. And that's what it takes to get an upset in the first round. Has to feel good for Julia Adams, sixth all time in the kills. Oh. And that one was maybe a split half inch higher. Yeah, and, just and that's from another point over. probably. And Coach Jason Williams just staring at it, just going, oh, those are the ones you want as a coach, because that's where you really insert yourself as a coach. A lot of times, the players are the ones that are going to win these matches, but that's how you can squeak out a point here and there, right. and uh, you really want that one. But hey, you're happy with a two-point lead here. Florida State now happy to have Phelan back behind the service line to see if she can go on a run. I think it was a 7-0 run with her at the stripe much earlier in this match. They switched up the play call. If you watch, the middle went on a gap set, held the middle, set right over the top of it with speed, and it's one on one, and then she cranks it to her favorite shot, hard cross court. Audrey Gra Knowles. That was a great play call by TCU. Brianna Green, the Denver transfer, will not get a chance to serve. Taylor Rayola coming in, and her father, Played nine years in the NFL for the Lions. Her brother is the number one quarterback prospect in the country. Dylan, I'll give you two guesses where he's going to college and pro probably only need one. A he's Georgia Bulldog. Oh. A little bit of an athletic family. Par from the middle, and she's going to get a kill from behind the back line. I want to be shocked to see a six. They lose their libero one week into practice. Concussions dealt them some problems as well, and they've had to find ways to knock off Pittsburgh. Even in a match at North Carolina, they were down 2-0 late, came back for the reverse sweep on the road to give them a chance to win the conference championship, but that's tested now. And look for Florida State to keep setting number four. She touches 10-8. She's their best offensive player. There's a reason why she was co-player of the year. In these situations, you want to go to her, but she just went back row. So Rothman's going to have to find a way 
uh, to get the kills for him in out of system situations. Para going to work. 21 kills, hitting over 300 for the match. Well, this is where Jay, uh, the ability for Gibson to play so well earlier, it gave her a little bit of a break in the middle of it. Now Good they point. can just ride her out as this match unfolds. It's Nicholson serving, gives one back to FSU. Here's that rotation one we talk about. Will she just go to her go-to, set behind her to Nalls? I think the answer was yes. Yeah. Handled by TCU. Nalls again, another swing, but the block by Florida State, including Rothman. Florida State looking for some energy, trying to figure out how to get back into this. Uh, name we haven't said yet, Sarah Sylvester had a great touch on the block to get the ability to get to the swing. Uh, we haven't been able to say that, so that was a nice touch by her to extend that rally. A little bit of momentum right now for Florida State. Para, well that was handled by Phelan. But TCU gets the point, so they're a little bit closer to reaching set point. I love the aggressiveness by Phelan right there, just trying to make something happen. And she got over it quick. She's instantly looking over at the blocker. She's not playing like a freshman. She's trying to figure out, okay, where are the matchups? Who should I set right now? It's high level stuff. That got some hands. And she delivered a perfect ball to the right side, got a swing. That's a way to fail your recover. That's one of the things you look for in elite athletes. Quickly. Yeah, she just she got over it. Yeah, and th that mistake is a bad mistake. Uh, for a volleyball player. But she was being aggressive, and she got over it quick, and that, that's what it takes to make it at a high level. Druskovic serving. How about that, an ace? What a time for an ace. Interesting to see if Jason takes a timeout here. Within one point. It looks like he's going to let it ride out right now, just giving him some positive encouragement. Gibson, spin her night, doesn't get the kill, at least there. And here come the Seminoles, we're tied at 22. Rothman with that out of, out of system swing, That's, she's had a few down the line like that. It's a little, it's a little hard to set up. With those long arms, where do you set up the block? It's coming from such a high angle, driving deep. It's a great job by her. To, another impressive thing, if you look at it right now, Parra's passing about half the court in this rotation. And they want to, and she wants to hit the ball. So the ability for her to pass 50% of the court and go swing, it's just a high-level player for TCU. Timeout is over. Draskovic, Serbian, back to uh, serve. Can TCU answer? They go to Para and Florida State. It's the point for a 4 0 run. We don't have a great angle. This ball might have been left just inside the Florida State's hands come up with the block. What a momentum shift in the building. And you can you can feel the Arkansas crowd maybe giving some love to some some old old people from this area. Well, this building is filled up to say the least in anticipation of the second set, giving it a much better atmosphere. And that was almost a do or die point for TCU to even things up again. That's a tough set for a freshman to figure out. Do you go outside or do you go back? Gibson's hot, but you got Parra, who's uh, your first team all-conference player for a reason. 17th kill for Gibson. Florida State must win this fourth. That was quick and that was easy. Set point. Perfect pass. They're gonna set their middles, they're scoring. And if you're Florida State, you got Koenig coming back front row with set point. It's a good spot for you to be in. Rothman serving. Para retaliates, tied at 24. Great set by Nicholson. She got the tempo she wanted. She went and ripped it to the deep corner. Great swing. Tied 24 all. 
Are they going to go to Koenig on the outside? I would guess yes, but you never know. TCU won the first 26-24. It's going to take at least 26 to win this one. Handled by the Frogs. Is Parra going to have a chance? Gibson just barely cleared the tape. The block puts TCU at match point. They wrist it with the triple block, and they got it. Florida State with the timeout. What a country in efficiency. It's actually a really tough decision for the setter. You wonder if the coaches told her what to do or said, hey, you feel it out. <laughs> if I was Florida State, I'd pick the right one. <laughs> I'd, pick, I'd pick the correct option. This is match point. Gibson serving. Florida State needs the points. TCU can win it here. Do they go to Para? They will. And behind the antenna, TCU takes down Florida State, and they will advance to play tomorrow night at Barnhill Arena. And what a fitting way to end it for Para to go rip it. She's played great against them all year and had a great season.